Good afternoon folks. So what we're going to do in today's problem is we have a little pictorial view of an object here and we have to draw the orthographic 2D views of it. So it says here, pictorial views of an object is shown below. Okay, we can see here it's kind of based on like a little toy boat or something you might make in a woodwork class. Uh, part A, uh, we have to draw an elevation in the direction of arrow A. So we can see arrow A is pointing in the left direction, so it's going to go on the left hand side of our XY line. We should know how to set up the various views now, the elevation, end elevation and plan. Uh, plan projected from the elevation in the direction of arrow B, so looking down top of it, and then an end elevation projected in the direction of arrow C. So obviously arrow A is going pointing to the left, so we keep our elevation on the left hand side of our XY line. Arrow C then is pointed to the right, we keep it to the right of our elevation. That's generally kind of the rule of thumb for setting it up. You can see here as well, I've also kind of uh, color coordinated uh, the faces. So everything in the direction of arrow A, I've kind of shaded in red here. You can see all this surface here at the front, this kind of surface here. And then what's important here is, we've kind of introducing here now our kind of first kind of circular surface. And we will see that kind of front part of it there, so we will. But there'll be certain points of it where we won't see it or hear anymore, okay? And what we're actually going to see it is like a rectangle, okay? And you'll see it later as we're completing the question. In the direction of arrow C, okay, I can see the blue face here. Obviously, there's another one here at the side, obviously, where the front of it has been tapered, okay, or cut. Um, I also see that blue face. What's important to note is in surface, or, or sorry, in the direction of my elevation as well, okay? But it's not necessarily the true shape of it, okay? So I just had that shaded in blue because I said it's mainly focused, obviously, is with uh, view C. I'm also going to see this surface here, okay, this sloping surface, and I'm also once again going to see this face here, okay, once the kind of, I suppose, on our chimney part of our boat, uh, once again, I'll see a bit of that, and eventually it'll kind of get cut off over here, okay, once again, another rectangle. And then finally, in our bird's eye view, I'll see all the green surfaces, okay, I'll also see this circle, okay, as a perfect circle looking down on top of it, and I'll actually see this blue face here as well, the sloping surface, okay. Uh, I've left a couple of surfaces white, you can see a little face in here white, and I've left this face white, because in no view A, B or C do I actually see them. That means they might actually come in later as hidden detail. So, first of all we'd always work out our measurements. Our overall height is 90mm by adding 40 here, plus the 30 on this section, plus the 20 on the chimney. So that adds up to 90. Our overall length then, going from left to right of the whole object, once you add up these numbers is 200, and then our width at the back here is 50. Okay, so setting up the question, this is what it would look like. We have our elevation position on the left, our end elevation on the right, and then our plan view projected underneath our elevation using a 45 degree line to transfer our widths. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put, start off with my elevation, and I'm going to put in all of my lengths in one go, and then my various heights. Okay, and you can see I have a couple of heights here. I've got 40, but then it steps down 20, so it's 20 and 20, and then from the, that height then it goes up 30 and another 20. So I'll start with lengths and heights, and I'll put in all those construction lines. So, <clears throat> reading from left to right, our first measurement is 25, our next measurement is 20, so 25 plus 20 is 45, and our next measurement is another 20, so that'll be 65. After 65, it goes a distance of 95, so I'll just move it over, 95, and then that leaves us with 20 and 20. Yeah, that's working out fine for me, so there's 20 and 20. Now I've done that, I'm going to put in my various heights. I'm just going to put them in on this side. So stepping up 40, 40 plus 30 is 70, which is 20 left over. And if we remember back from the sheet, step down 40, okay, for those little kind of cuts in the actual block of wood as well. So I've actually put in all my lengths and I've put in all my heights. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to project those heights across. This one's going the full way across, and this one I'm going to leave for a minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my lengths. And these are lines that are going up vertically here. So 25, 20, and then we had another 20. So that's that section there, and then the back section here and here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, at this height here where I step down 20, I'm going to just mark cross. Now I could do a full line across, but what I'm actually going to use it for is I'm just going to use it as a guide to give me these ones here. Okay? And what I've actually drawn in there, in this little block here, is the kind of little channel that has been cut out of it, okay, or trenched out of it, okay? That's gone out of it there. So that's what I've kind of put in there. So I'm going to start heavying in a little bit of information here to make it a little bit more clear to us. 
So this line is the front of it, that's the nose of it. I can heavy that in. This is where the tapered part is, and this is where the little trench is. So that's where I'm going to heavy that down top. Then we've got another little kind of channel cut here at the back, and there's the back section. <clears throat> now, heavy line across, heavy line across, and this whole line going from here to here without including the channels, obviously is going to be heavy. So there we actually have like our main block, okay? So what I've actually done there is I've kind of heavied in this line, this line, this line the whole way along as far as here and here. I've also heavied in these sections and then our various vertical lines. So when I look in the direction of arrow A, that block at the bottom that's what I'm actually going to see. Okay, this section here, and then this bit at the front. So you can see the line here. Okay, going down where obviously the front of it is. That's this line here. Okay, and there's our two channels. Now what we want to do is we're going to put in this surface here. That's the next one we're going to focus on. So it's up a height of 30 millimeters, and just reading it here from the front. Okay, from this where the channel is here, it steps back. Or sorry, it steps. A distance of 45 to here okay we can see that so that guy that's going to kind of guide us to that point up here which is important giving us our kind of uh, angles line or incline line so 45 and then another 30 okay so that's how we're going to do that get that done <clears throat> so from this point right here I'm going to measure a distance of 45 millimeters and then another 30 which would be 45 plus 30 is 75 and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step that up to about there. Let this guy come up as well. Maybe to about there. And then with my extra 30 millimeters height that I've already marked in, I'm going to put that line across. And what's important is now I could do the whole line across, absolutely fine. What's important though is I can connect that down to here. And you can see I've actually got the little kind of uh, section I suppose where the actual wheelhouse would be. I'm not sure the full the exact name but so just heavy that in. Maybe this and then finally my incline line as well. And there we go. There's that section completely done. Now we've got that done. The last little bit we have to do is this kind of surface up here. Now what's important to note is we've got a cylinder sitting on top. But any time you look straight at a cylinder, okay, what you're actually going to see is a rectangle, okay? If I just take this masking tape, okay, now I know it's a small cylinder, but it still is a cylinder. Now, when we look down the top of it, we're going to see a circle, which is the green circle here on top. But when you look at it straight on, the shape you're actually going to see is a rectangle, okay, going from here to the other side, okay? So that's what we're going to see at the front of it as well. We're going to see a rectangle, okay? And what's important to note then is how long is our rectangle? Now, all it tells us up here is the height of it, but it also tells us the radius. And our radius is 10. Therefore, if our radius is 10, our diameter is going to be 20. Therefore, our length of it is 20. So what's important to note is it's going to be sitting right in the middle of this little kind of green section at the top, and we know that is 30 millimeters long. So if it's sitting in the middle, what's half of 30? 15. You can see the marks in there. So. With that in mind, my measurement of 30 millimeters here, I'm going to now mark 15 in. And that gives me the middle of where that cylinder would be. So what I have to do now is, because the radius is 10, I'm going to measure 10 millimeters to the left and 10 millimeters to the right. There we have it. At those points right there, I'm now going to connect up to the top, line across the top. Just like that. And there you have it. There is our elevation view completed. And here is our cylinder at top, but what we're seeing it is as a, I suppose in this case it's actually looking like a square instead of a rectangle. Okay, depending on the dimensions. With the elevation done now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our end elevation over here. Okay, which is what we see in blue. So I'm going to see the kind of two, the nose of the ship here. I'm going to see this sloping surface and once again another cylinder. That's going to be essentially the exact same. The only difference is some this time I'm going to have to put in widths. But before I put in my widths, I'll transfer across my heights. So any height I had that's relevant, I'm going to bring it across. So the 20 millimeters, the 40 millimeters from here, 
extra 30, and then obviously the 20 is left over. So there's my various heights. Now I'm going to put in my widths. And my first width for the front of it is 25 millimeters. That's going to give me this nose section. And then what's important to note is, if we look across here, we're going to see that line there is right in the middle. And then it's telling us from the middle, I'm going to measure 15 to the left and 15 to the right for this sloping surface. And then obviously this section here is right in the middle once again. Okay, so I'm going to put that in. So 25 millimeters. That will give me obviously half of 50, which is helpful. So with that done there, there's the kind of nose a little bit. I'll have it in a minute. And now from here, in this section, I'm going to measure 15 millimeters to the left and 15 millimeters to the right. So put it on 15 in the middle, measure back 15, and then measure 15 forward brings me to 30. Now I'm going to do heavy lines up to here because I know that sloping surface only goes up as far as this face or this line here, this height line of 30 because there's the slope and that's the height it goes to, so follow it across. And now using my center line at the top, I'm going to complete the same process, I'm going to make a little mark right there, just follow that up, go project it the whole way up, it's absolutely fine like that. Okay, and this is where our cylinder starts and like we did here where we measured 10 to the left and 10 to the right, it's the exact same sequence. So I'm going to measure. 10 millimeters to the left and 10 millimeters to the right. And there you have it. So, once again, having in the important information, I'm going to go my vertical lines first. Almost made a mistake there. So we have it, folks. There's the nose section at the front where you'd have the two kind of pointy bits. Uh, this is the sloping surface, okay, and this is our cylinder. Now, in this view, what we also do have is a little bit of hidden detail, okay. And if you remember, if I refer back to the sheet here, remember the two white faces I never paint, or say, I suppose, shaded in. In along there, there's these, like, edges. There. And obviously there's an edge running down there. Now, there's also edges from this point right here. There's an edge kind of running in there as well. Where I imagine it would come down and meet this one, and then that would go across, okay? It's just because we can't see it, because this kind of top face here is kind of um, shielding it out. And it's the same at the back. Now, because it's orthographic, what's important is we have to put in all information relevant to the object. Okay? So just because we don't see it doesn't mean we don't put it in. So those edges were down, obviously, a distance of 20 millimeters. So that's why I projected this line across. So those edges are actually running across left to right here. So straight away, then I'm going to put in my hidden detail. And there we have it. Hidden detail put in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our last view, which is our bird's eye view of the plan. Now, straight away, I'm going to transfer down any lengths that I previously had. I'm going to transfer all of those down. And any widths that I had, I'm also going to bring those down as well. So I'm going to focus on first, before I focus on, I suppose, the boathouse and then the uh, chimney on top. I'm just going to focus on the block at the bottom, okay, the main section. So I'm going to take this 25mm line first. So if I bring that down, I'm going to need it somewhere, and I know I need it at the front of the ship, so I'm going to bring it all the way across. And what's helpful about that line there is it's actually right in the middle, okay? So the first thing I want to do is get the boathouse put in. So I know it's a straight line going all the way across here like this, likewise on this side, and then <coughs> tapers at an angle, here. And there we have the nose of the ship. So there's the nose of the ship, and I'll also put in the back edge as well, so here. And now I'm looking for my two trenches, and as we look directly down it, one trench is here, so it has to be in here. And the other trench is here. 
Okay, so there's our kind of main section of the boathouse. What I've essentially drawn in there, now just going to heavy in a little bit more information. I've done this line in the previous view. I've done that line. I've done this line. Okay, so I'm going to heavy in kind of what I've done there. It's going all the way back. So we're getting there now. Okay, so we're getting there as we can see. <clears throat> and now what we have to do is we just have to kind of draw in the rest of it, okay? So I've kind of done all this kind of main green body. What I'm list or what I'm missing when I'm looking down the birds eye view is this blue slope surface, this uh, green square, and then obviously the circle sitting on top of it. Okay? So the next one I'm gonna focus on is this section here, okay, and this bit. So as I look down on top of it, I'm gonna see a rectangle and what I think is going to be a square. So that is in relation to this point here, this point, and this point. Okay? So if all of those transferred down, the only thing that I'm missing is the widths. Okay? And the width was previously here. So I'm going to transfer that down there. And transfer the next guy down. And where they hit there and there, jet them across. And now what's helpful here is I know the width for my slope. So maybe in this section this section and there we have it this guy in here is my slope and then this is the circle sitting on top and the last thing we're going to have to do is put in a circle that we see when we're looking down on top of it so from the middle up here I'm also going to bring that down and what that helps me find is right where the circle should be so I'm just going to set up a compass there so I can complete this part of the question so, using a little extension that I have here, this will be a little bit awkward because it's quite a small one. So you get 10 millimeters on your compass. So that's the first thing I want to do. I'm going to measure 10 millimeters on my compass. I'm using a briar for this, so hopefully it doesn't slip. And having measured 10 millimeters, I'm now going to. The pen starts to work. There we go put in my circle and there we have the circle sitting down on top of it okay and just check always have a little check then is there any hidden detail that I'm missing okay I had hidden detail in this picture none in my elevation I'm just wondering do I have any in my plan view no so I'll just come back here now and what I've actually done here now is I've got all that got this guy and I've got the circle okay so pretty much almost got everything there now uh, so just to give it a little bit of clarity what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade in the surfaces here using the same colors on the sheet so there you have it folks uh, that is the question completed I've applied a little bit of color there now so it kind of helps I suppose bring our understanding of it uh, forward a little bit more and I've also attached the names of each view so elevation end elevation and plan Okay, so you can see there, just applied a little bit of color that was represented on my sheet previously to the drawing. Okay, hope you found it helpful, guys. That is the question completed.